Uh, the first time we met was at McNally. Um, I was actually working on a project with a um, engineer friend of mine who runs a studio in Richfield. Um, and we were doing an electronic duo together, kind of just writing demos together. Um, and I always had the interest of working with a female vocalist. So I asked around at school if anybody knew anybody who was looking to sing in a band. Um, and I don't know if Elaine was technically looking for somebody, but one of her friends suggested her. Um, and I Facebooked, me. Facebook messaged her and asked her if she <laughs> wanted to sing music <laughs> over electronic <laughs> beats. Um, and I told her if she likes Portishead and Bjork and Radiohead too. And they were already my, like my favorite band, so that worked out. So we started <laughs> uh, recording with Adam, the, the three of us together, um, and actually brought in a drummer. We're trying to do like a full band thing. We did that for a couple months and eventually broke off to just the two of us um, and just started doing things on our own, and that's how it's ended up. Yes, so we are currently, we reside in St. Paul. Um, so we play a lot of shows in Minneapolis. Um, so a lot of the venues there are what we're currently paying. We would love to get out of the state, you know, in the near future and play elsewhere, but right now it's primarily Minneapolis. Um, and like I said, we give our music away for free, so wipingoutthousands.com is our website. Um, but the website that we like to use as a music distribution channel would be uh, Bandcamp. A lot of bands are adopting that website, so wipingoutthousands.bandcamp.com um, is where we put all of our music up. Um, our first album, Reaction Machine, was just a five-song EP, which is a short album. Um, we released that back in January, and we are currently working on a full-length album that we want to release in September. Um, we actually played some of those songs today. So um, mm -hmm. if anybody is interested in finding our music or getting it for free, if you just Google Wiping Out Thousands, you'd be able to find us really easily. I've only ever really lived in Minnesota. I, I was born in California, but I spent the majority of my developed life in Minnesota. Um, so I can't necessarily speak to what it's like in other major cities, but I, you know, I am aware of the fact that Minnesota has a very unique music culture and the fact that we have a lot of different organizations that can support us as musicians. Um, you know, the current is always lauded as the, you know, the, the really well-known, publicly funded um, source for local music. Cool source. Um, yeah. Uh, but, you know, things like Radio K, you know, Pioneer Public Television, being able to come and do this kind of performance and have it broadcasted for us is, is really cool. Um, it, it, it's one of those hurdles when you're trying to share your creative work with people as to how do you get it to them. And the Internet's been a really great source for that, a really great free source. But other than the Internet, how do you get your music into listeners' hands? And, you know, radio and television are two really cool things that we have direct access to in Minnesota. So. When it, when it comes to writing lyrics, um, I try to m make them matter. <laughs> uh, it, they want them to be about something. Whether, I mean, there are lyrics to a song that's going to come out on the new album. Um, it's about being a snake. Or actually, it's about, it's about um, a human hatching out of a snake's egg. Um, I just much prefer something more cryptic. Or, you know, people can kind of take it and make it what they want. Or, um, I've always been fond of, of bands that write lyrics that don't necessarily up front exactly tell you what they are. You know, you, if you were to sit down and read <laughs> lyrics, you'd go, what does this mean? I don't understand this. But when you put it with the music, you can tell the feeling behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a good point. If, if you write lyrics that are cryptic, you know what they are. Um, but you leave it up to the listener to kind of adapt it in the way that they feel. You know, it, it's, it's speaking to them. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that songwriters, I wouldn't say get annoyed by, but it, it's weird to have someone say, so what does this song mean? What is this song about? And you don't want to tell them because that either ruins the point or mm -hmm. it kind of takes away the, the intimacy with that listener because if they know what you're singing about exactly, then they don't listen to it the way they should. Um, but we do know for a fact that for as long as we can, we will be releasing our music for free. Mm -hmm. um, a pay what you want thing is an idea. So if someone does want to pay for the album, they're more than happy to. Um, but for us, I think the biggest thing is as long as we can, we're going to have it be free so that mm -hmm. if you really want it, you can just click yes and now you have it. 